without ado, we are now moving ahead to the next session, that is the panel discussion, which is a very, very hot topic to discuss today. That is going to be a panel on decoding the Digital Personal Data Protection Act, DPDP 2023. We would like to welcome our moderator, Mr. Jaspreet Singh, partner, clients and markets leader, advisory services, GT Bharat, LLP, who will be moderating this discussion comprising distinguished InfoSec leaders. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause to welcome our esteemed speakers. Very firstly, we would like to welcome Mr. Baidyanath Kumar, CISO and DPO, JK Lakshmi Sivent Limited. Let's have a round of applause for him, please. Can we have a round of applause for him? Come our next speaker, Mr. Samrat Bhatt, Senior Director, IS and IT, Match Move India. Can we have a round of applause for him, please? Could we have a round of applause for Mr. Pushkal Mishra Siso, Dr. Lal Pat Labs Limited. Can we please have a round of applause for him? I would also like to welcome Mr. Swapneel Rajay Pawar, IT and Digital Pro Head, ACG World. Can we have a round of applause for him? We are awaiting for Mr. Vaidyanath Kumar. He is going to be joining us here. And we have a round of applause for him once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Looks like the frame is complete and we cannot wait to unfold. Yes, it will be. If you want, we can switch it off. No, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them all a huge and a thunder and a massive round of applause. Come on, all of you, all the people at the back. Let's give the jury, this is going to be really, really power packed and brain stimulating and looking forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Oh, God. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think probably this is the second last session. So uh, before the award ceremony, uh, I think uh, I'm really honored that we have such an elite panel here on the dais. Question to the audience, you know, do you really think we are worried about privacy of our own data? Anybody? Yes, no. No, no. Are we, are we really worried about our, our personal data? Oh, nice. I see some yeses. Do you think as Indians, we worry about our personal data? Uh, you know, there are two views. Everybody here is saying yes. Uh, some of people sitting on the dais, my esteemed fellow panelists are saying no. Uh, I, I personally feel that uh, we have a lot of area to improve, right? Uh, once a day I see either one of my colleagues, friends, relatives, somebody in my network posting a photograph with their son with his certificate saying, wow, he's come first name, phone number, certificate ke upar, school card, dress, everything is clearly written, right? I, I, I don't know how do we claim that we are very worried about our uh, privacy, whether you look at the way we throw our boarding passes, our tickets, etc. Uh, very different view uh, there. Though a step in the right direction, because we never had a, a corporate law which would help govern how we look at uh, privacy of uh, data. A step in the right direction. You had, uh, you know, the Data Privacy Act in 1995 came up with GDPR. Uh, so let's let's hear some of the opening comments from my fellow panelists. Uh, I think Swapnil, let's start with you. Uh, quickly, any opening yeah. comments? So basically, opening comments. I can say uh, this act. As for my knowledge, it, it has to be not only for the uh, organizations. Likely you said, sir, uh, correctly, we used to post any boarding pass or any result on social media also. So this act not only for the organizations, but yes, it's a, as a each and individual, it has to be it has to be follows. Wow, it is for the individual, every citizen. Thank yes, you, yes. Pushkal. Absolutely, thank you, Jaspreet. Uh, before I sort of, you know, give my comments, I just have a, a small suggestion for everyone, whether you use AI or ML or you don't use uh, Zero Trust, there is no scape for DP, DPA. You most definitely have to do it regardless of your industry, regardless of your uh, function. Now, uh, DPDP Act, uh, privacy in general in India is extremely uh, 
uh, you know, important the way I look at it, look at the way in which the transformation and the digitalizations is happening. Uh, what used to be the story of 90s where you didn't care much about your identity, now you have to care about it because there are a lot of identity specific frauds are actually taking up, gearing up, uh, trying to take undue advantage of yours. So it's important for the corporate, it is also important for the individual. So uh, DPDP Act is a right step in that direction. I think it will create the awareness and makes us responsible how to deal with our clients' information as well as our own personal information. Will make us more responsible. Thank you, Pushkil. Uh, Samrat, your opening comments, please. Yeah. Thanks, Jaspreet. Uh, I think I agree with Pushkar. Uh, yes, we, who we are, we are what our identity, you know, is perceived by everyone. So after, you know, 2020 and uh, we have seen the COVID and the post-COVID era, uh, these, uh, the digitalization and all, all, all of this has actually, you know, strengthened or made a need of such sort of an act because now everything has been digital, dig, dig, digitalized, sorry. And <coughs> if we are not, you know, ready to uh, secure the privacy, so we are not going to uh, survive much or the way we wanted to. Uh, as Jaspreet asked that, uh, are we, you know, really worried about our privacy? I still believe privacy is still a myth in uh, most or the majority of Indian cities or the rural areas. You go to any photocopy shop, you will find n number of uh, Aadhaar cards, n number of PAN cards. They will sell you for 10 rupees each. I know certain shops, I've seen. Uh, so, I hope all are actually not getting their Aadhaar cards scanned or printed somewhere else. If they are, then best of luck, man. Uh, Samrat, thank you for saying privacy is a myth. But I don't agree on the rural India piece only. Uh, we are in uh, A city, go to A plus, go to B city, and you'll see the difference. Go to any tier two city, you will see that still privacy is a myth. Rural India is an altogether different animal uh, that we're talking about, right? Uh, Vikas, your opening comment. Yeah, we'll come to you. Yeah. I live in electronic city, Bangalore, and the shop is there. Thank you. <laughs> and, and that started as probably the Silicon Valley of <laughs> India. Correct. Yeah. Thanks, Jaspreet, and thanks, uh, CIO Access, for having us here. I think we have two faces to this. Whereas on the organization side, most of us might be very, very uh, optimistic, and we would be very proactive in protecting the identity or the data of the company on our own individual self and as a group, as a community, as a family. We are less responsible. Rather, we would say we are irresponsible to sharing anything. People fly to Dubai and they put in their boarding cards on it. People, I mean, as Jaspreet said, bache ka photo, uska number, uska certificate, dress, uniform, everything is on the social media. And if there is an incident, God forbid, if that happens with a kid, and there are instances which have happened, and where is this whole privacy? And these might be the CIOs and CISOs of our own community in the organization. So I would say there are two faces to it, not necessarily defying, denying the fact that we don't care for privacy, but yes, on our personal front, where do you want to flaunt if we have achieved something, we really want to do that. We want to do that boldly. So that's it. Perfect, sir. Uh, not to take away the shine from you, we'll discuss corporate security also and find out various ways when after this session you will say, Oh, I think corporate also needs a lot of training. Uh, you know, that's a bigger myth. Whether it's the physical security, the physical register that you've kept at the reception where anybody can go and, you know, look at the last pages, etc. Yeah, yeah. But, but thank you uh, for that. Mr. Vishwa, your opening comments, please. Yeah. <clears throat> say, data privacy journey for India uh, was long due, I would say. And everyone knows how it went through. Uh, and how we were looking forward for such a law to take place. In fact, uh, uh, I would say uh, this should have happened long back, but better late than never. Um, and uh, I'm speaking from, uh, you know, background of IT services company where we, our customers are from various parts of the world. And those countries have security data privacy laws. 
and uh, whenever you are supplying uh, services, data transfer, and I, I think you may uh, appreciate that countries having similar types of laws or, you know, um, where, how they can trust only when you have those laws in those countries. I'm looking forward that government has taken this step. This is a good move, I would say. Uh, and uh, looking forward that this should get effectively implemented. That is more important because right now, I think some more questions will come in. Uh, I'm saying initially we, there will be a lot of hiccups, but uh, over a longer period, I think uh, the, at least the direction is good. And I'm looking forward that our country will develop that culture and whatever problems we just heard about uh, over a period of time will get sorted out is what my expectation is. I think the trust in doing business yeah. will go up, right? And, and thank you for bringing that out. I think right now, uh, everywhere you go, you're talking about India in 2030, India in 2047, decade, decade, India's century, right? I think that trust, because of this and other initiatives, which will project probably a very positive image of us from a law governance perspective, because a lot of times, you know, the main, so in your industry, IT, IT's industry, uh, I've worked in 20 years with a lot of IT, IT's firms from a consulting perspective. One of their concerns was how do we project to the larger US, UK, you know, Firan saying the data is safe. And then we, we don't like keep everything open here. Thanks for bringing that out. Uh, Badina. Yeah. Okay. So, th yeah. Uh, uh, my opening comments would be uh, just great. If you see, uh, if you see five years back or ten years back, most of the organization sectors, be it IT, ITS, or BFSI, or manufacturing, right? The focus was a lot on the cyber security controls, right? How to enhance the cyber security practice. But uh, these DPDPA is something which is encouraging the organizations to focus more and more on building the privacy related controls and this is the need of the R. If you see the way we are talking about the digitalization and even the individual's trust also to freely giving the consent to process your data, right? Or uh, likewise, is it very important to getting it governed by a privacy law. So th this is the need of the R and that's why all the uh, organizations or sectors, be it ITIES or manufacturing, they are all I have started focusing. At least they have to comply with the DPDP compliance. Excellent points. I'll take one word again from you is consent. Yeah. I think consent again, uh, you know, Samrat mentioned, I'll go back to you. Tier two cities, Takhvi consent will get finished. Today, your Uber driver has access to everything. A, a guy from any food delivery app has access to all your data. And he's consent that he will not pass on those details to anybody. Right? But ask him what is the meaning of consent or you give him something in return, the consent will go for a toss. With, with that, I'd like to start with you. Now, let's, you know, go in the reverse order. Uh, your industry, right? It's very easy to say uh, IT, ITS, telecom, banking, where there's a lot of B2C data to deal with. Privacy is very important. How do you, what are the steps you will take to convince your management saying, you know, traditional manufacturing organization. How do you convince them of the importance of privacy and what are you doing about it? Exactly. So the first thing what we have started, so the privacy is the topic of the boardroom agenda itself, like cyber risk. We have started discussing on that part. So if you see, we are into B2B to to C business, where it is business to business to consumer, because there are a lot of supply chain related and stuffs are also in included, right? Where you have even even the driving licenses as part of the logistics and uh, supply chain. And at, at the same time, even the employees data, which, uh, which is also getting processed, right? Because as a HR practice, those data are also important, right? And if you see uh, contractors, vendors, dealers, all those data are already there. And this is also equally important. It's right. not like that the data which is of the financial terms only are important because a lot of important information like PAN, Aadhaar also are getting stored. So right. here comes the importance of privacy of the data in the manufacturing sector also. Super. It's equally important, right? And even the complete, if you see, uh, the top management is aligned to the vision that uh, we have to also get it implemented. 
that's so, very that's very and, heartening to right. know and to start with the biggest challenge if you see with the consent management is that if we talk about the consent itself has to be formulated how we are going to develop the consent management platform and then also the 22 languages and all those clauses that you have to create that platform where the data has to be captured or consent has to be captured in 22 different languages and that also when we are talking about the data where marketing team is collecting some sort of data and or you go to a, a conference and you meet 500 people right and, all. and may, basically when the road shows also right and those all data if you see the way it is getting processed right so the first important thing is the challenges in the consent management the second thing is how those things are getting stored also so storing and the even the purpose limitation as the storage limitation so how long you have to store because it here comes the importance of the data subjects right management so if uh, whether you have developed that platform whether you can revoke the access when the data is no longer to be processed so those all things are very important and how we have to manage this so we have started to understand the development of legal framework for the privacy sure so that is very important sure uh, before i come to you vishwat uh, one more thing while you are developing all of this there are no laws how long do you keep a data for sorry maybe the audience would want to understand this a uh, lot of cio ceos i work with they say perpetual we don't delete any data and the more data you have the more problems you might face so so i will not reveal the timelines for which uh, data but you yes, have a data retention of, policy yes a data retention Super. policy and all those things are there and it is getting governed through that policy itself perfect yeah. uh, uh, one, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so I think okay, this I think depends on uh, organization also because previously I was working with the hospital industry and uh, in hospital industry as per <coughs> retention policy they had to be clip, uh, keep their, their, their data for I think human uh, age 100 years approx I think maximum 100 years or some minimum approx. That's the medical so, records that yeah, you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. That is I think Indian Medical Association guidelines. Yes, now, yeah. Right. So very important, uh, you know, Vishwas, how do you deal with this in your organization? IT, ITS, flavor of the country, everybody is talking about a sunshine industry taking India into the new decade. This along with the PPDP, how do you convince your management the importance of this? Yeah, um, for us <coughs> in IT industry, uh, journey is more uh, easier. The reason being, uh, though India has come up with this DPDP Act now, uh, we already are bound by GDPR, uh, then CCPA, then uh, we have also California. business in South Africa, uh, there is a Poppy Act, mm -hmm. uh, even yeah. Singapore has PDPA. So all our customers are already, uh, you know, on these, I mean, abiding by these laws and thereby back-to-back, uh, -back, uh, you know, contractual requirements. Uh, we have to abide by it. So this is applicable to almost all IT uh, companies. So we already have that uh, framework in place, data privacy framework in place, which is implemented, uh, I mean, with, with all those, uh, you know, uh, uh, principles being followed right from data uh, identification, data m minimization, consent, uh, storage, uh, you know, uh, keeping, ensuring that uh, the necessary controls are applied continuous monitoring, access, uh, even the rights given to the data principle, uh, sorry, data subject, here we call data principle uh, in DPDP. So uh, eraser rights, uh, modification rights, all so those are already built, already yeah. built in. So my, uh, uh, including the eraser, what you're talking about. So for us, uh, the journey for DPDP would be to see the differences, uh, you know, study those differences and then uh, fill those gaps wherever those, uh, those gaps are. But uh, more or less, uh, the framework is already in place. We have to also see uh, sometimes, you know, uh, various languages because there are there may be local, uh, uh, I mean, vernacular workers. Yeah, vernacular. So those are some of the aspects that we need to, uh, you know, um, uh, look into. Uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, so far there is no uh, third party compliance as such. I mean, third party audits have been mentioned, but we already have put ourselves all those controls having third party audits getting done on this. So therefore, uh, continuous monitoring, see effectiveness of any system will uh, sustain only if uh, not only one time implementation, but continuous, uh, you know, review and uh, ensuring that all the risks are getting mitigated, effectiveness of checking the effectiveness of uh, those controls 
and having uh, you know third party uh, assurance built with that and it's a sure. continuous cycle and assuring that uh, all the amendments of the law are also getting implemented because even for gdpr i think you must be aware that there are a lot of new changes that keep on coming uh, small uh, in small things claims to and uh, the so amendments many, yeah com amendments so the effectiveness depends on this so uh, one of the aspect which i wanted to in the opening command was that it's good but to sustain for a longer period of time you require to continue this journey and that is where the real effectiveness will come in so maybe once we reach uh, maybe pushkal will talk about how do you it's easy to implement it once right but maybe pushkal uh, samrat how how do you sustain this going forward everybody is talking about creating a rule book easy writing a policy easy what is the technology implementation you would need to do to sustain this for the next 10 15 20 years right Go yep yeah uh, see for sustenance i think more than technology i think right now education is the awareness. most awareness and education is the most important thing because you can make n number of laws if they're not understood the consequences are not understood by the common you know receiver uh, the implementation will not be successful. That, that's why there is a huge penalty on that. It's, it's the same mentality. We are, we wear a helmet to save Chalan, not our, not our Jan, right? Wow, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so, yeah, to sustain, yes, this is the first point, but regular audits and, you know, reviews of all the controls and technologies we have to invest in, uh, you know, uh, encryptions, we have to invest in tokenizations, we have to invest in secured storages, which are reviewed. Right, and a, uh, uh, what I say, um, and a secured backup system, which, which can be, you know, uh, reviewed and audited uh, regularly. So I think these are cert certain things we must go on. Thanks. I'll come to you, Pushkal, in a minute. Uh, Samrat, uh, you know, uh, sorry, uh, Vikas Samrat spoke about so many technology interventions. How can we uplift this entire awareness piece? Uh, I do like a board meeting once in two, three days, where unfortunately what Samrat said holds true. Everybody, nobody's talking about the bail implementation, timelines, etc. Everybody's asking you 250 crores. You know, how do I save myself from 250 crores? Your, your thoughts? Same thing. Helmet wearing is not for risk aversion. It's for chalan nahi katna chahi hot nahi. So, aaj ki mein everybody is only worried about baas wo dhaiso crore kaise bachega. But hard of all, I feel that from an organization's perspective, as far as my industry goes in, since we are into a B2B business, right. and the bigger part is some of these controls are built in. So for instance, when I do a supply of any kind of services to you or to the organization as such, some of these are inherent. Like for instance, from a secrecy and from my own revenue perspective, I wouldn't want to disclose that. I would want to see that my customer's data is secure, though there might not be a law to it, there might not be a consent when to erase it. But the thing is, I know since my marketing is my own effort, I would want to retain that customer and see that nobody comes to know of that this data is with me. So from my own perspective, I would say some of these things are standard, which might be a part of a subconscious mind. There might not be written, there might not be a law to it, there might not be an agreement to store data or some of these things. But yes, people even in the board today, they're saying, how do we avert the data loss? If the data loss prevention needs some kind of uh, implementation of systems, let's do that. But let's ensure that not only word of mouth or the data itself, somehow goes out. So that's the thing that is going on in our organization. But yes, 250 crores, how do we avert it? That's something which is very important. Perfect. Pushkul, uh, technology piece. How much technology, how do you implement it? What are some of the key changes you think will happen from a technology perspective once this is enforced? Absolutely. It's actually a very important question. Um, and it is linked with your original question, how do we sustain it? So I think investment in technology is pertinent for a couple of reasons, right? Um, specifically in an area when you have multiple subsidiaries, you have multiple partners, and you have sort of workflows which is across your company, right? So there are certain areas where you have to have a technology intervention when it comes to consent management particularly. 
Now, uh, I think one of our friends said that the consent doesn't need to be, uh, you know, implicit. Uh, it has to be explicit uh, and, and in the regional language also. Uh, you need a technology intervention for that, right? Uh, you know, the way you take the consent, somebody walks in in a lab, or all the way somewhere in a tier five remote village, there's this entire difference in the ecosystem. That has to be enabled through technology. So consent management piece is going to be fundamental there. Second part is all the subjects, data subjects rights. How am I going to constantly, you know, deal with data erasure requests? What happens if I get a 100,000 data erasure request in day one? What kind of acknowledgement am I going to give to the uh, data principal? There is going to be a technology intervention requirement there as well. Uh, subsequently, one thing that I think we all have to keep in mind that organizations were never designed keeping the privacy in mind. Now, this privacy compliance will force the way in which we have been working. So, one of the first thing that would happen is that you need to link your workflows with privacy design in mind. You have to loosely couple the patient data. You cannot hard couple the patient with all the records and so that you can't even get rid of it. You have to be ready if you have to get rid of data and then you have to have a right technical solution. I think just before uh, this call, there was a gentleman who gave the, uh, you know, you know uh, talk around the data erasure. I think just that is also a very important part. How do we deal with data erasure across the type of data? It's not gonna have be happening manually. You, we must need a technical intervention there. So if you're doing data erasure manually, then you need at least 10 people only to deal Absolutely. with that. Only to deal with that. Absolutely. Right? And, and uh, before we come to you, Swapnil, just a point on you said, first day, 10,000 cases being filed only for data deletion. This actually happened in EU. The day GDPR became a law, 25th May 2018, first day, 36,000 cases were filed. Imagine, in India, if I really want to take you know, I can go to a healthcare company and say delete all my data. I can go to a hospitality company, delete all my data. In one day, I can file hundreds of requests to various platforms saying, please delete my data. Imagine if they get like 10,000, 15,000 such requests a day, how do you deal with, how do you acknowledge it? How do you track it? If you, if you are, if anybody's thinking that this can be done manually, I think then you need like a supercomputer mind to... Uh, I, it's not I even agree. possible, so just one. So just with, I'll just uh, sort of, you know, add uh, one uh, important element to it. Um, is really uh, GDPR sort of, uh, we are in a position where uh, we are a bit lucky that GDPR already existed before us. We can learn from uh, it. We can learn from it, definitely. But I think now we're talking about it 15 years down the line. And, uh, you know, the conversations are going to change completely, right? Conversation is going to change completely because the pace at which the, the, the compliance are coming, it is coming from a fundamental gap in the, in the, the way in which things are getting misused, right? I, I, we'll, come yeah. we'll come to that. I, I, we'll I'll come just, to that. We'll come to that. Let's be, just hear. Just uh, one second. Yeah. So I think in this, I would also want to put in if there is an erasure request or if there is a need to do an erasure, their technological intervention is very much required from a compliance perspective. Now, who knows whether you've deleted my data or not? Something like IS standards, something like IS 27 from a project standpoint or something, IS 7 which we talk about project revenues. How do we ensure that this compliance is in place? I will just say I've deleted. I have deleted. And the data very much exists. Who's yeah. going to do an audit for that? that so from, there will be no. The, the technological investment has to be there and the board has to understand that that 250 crores is not merely 250 crores one time. It can perennially and every year can happen. Yeah, yeah. but, but uh, at least in, in one of the public statements made by uh, you know, uh, the ministers, everybody, they said it is also about self-accountability. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. if you ask me to delete all the data, you have to, I, I'll give you an email statement. You can drag me wherever you want, right? Absolutely. Um, we can fight it out in the court for next 20, 25 years. And right? it has a side effect too. If, 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 if I choose my data to be deleted, I'm also losing a lot of features and functionalities. My entire history is going away. Yeah. So, you know. It's, it's a cost of doing business versus the 
customer experience that I get. Yeah. It, it is both things. Your, your comments, uh, Swapnil, on this entire technology intervention piece, before I have a very interesting yeah. question. So sorry, okay. Uh, so I'm, I already agree with you all, but I think if we all uh, talking about only for digital data. So my concern is like that, if there is any hard copy, like in the future, uh, example, from my side, we uh, as we are into B2B and we give the some POs to my customers uh, and uh, some after some times that PO copy found in some chai wall or something, vada wala and all. So in that case, and somebody can sue the uh, in court example. Yeah. At that time, who will be responsible? This is my concern like uh, as a purchaser or as a buyer. So whoever uh, has collected the data, the government is very clear. Yeah. Wherever the data is originating from, if it's a PO you have issued yeah. and given to your customer, so this is it is still customer. you are responsible Data for fiduciary has a very, very big role in this very case. Clear. Principal is suppose now, I mean, he is secured, safe. The guy, the principal, data principal will simply say, Tumko diya tha maine data. Now, aaj ki mein, if you how look at… How do you at prove that? How do you from, prove that? Correct. From a, from a uh, account opening perspective, although a lot of banks have introduced this, but from an ISP, when you take a new connection on a phone or a phone number, so much of data goes in. I'm, I'm asking Insurance. one question. So much of data goes in in a physical format. I'm asking format. one question to all six of you. God forbid your Aadhaar card data is found online. All right? Can you pinpoint whether you've given this to a particular no bank way. or to a courier agency, no way. to anybody? No way. How will you How will you take a company to court? You can't today. Unfortunately, because your data has already been shared so many times. So that's why I think the onus is on companies to prove that it is not leaked from there, yeah. right? And also if, the if data which is publicly available is outside the purview. It's outside yeah. the purview Pur anyway. Gambit of and the law. I think uh, uh, yeah. it is also create a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, concept of co-owning the data, right? Anybody who's giving the purpose and meaning to the data has to be responsible for responsible that data, for right? Sure. Uh, I think you know, somebody, yeah. Yeah. No, so here if you see, we are talking a lot about the technological controls and all. So we have to understand even the integrate balance between privacy and technological controls also. So Pushkal, if you see the moment we are going to invest into security controls like your IPS, your WAF or any technological controls, what is the purpose of that? We are just going to prevent some sort of data attacks right yeah. or data breaches at the same time privacy says that you have to open the data and look into that because these all security tools need not be blind into those things otherwise a crafted payload can be targeted on your servers or there can be attack so that's why it is very important to create uh, the security controls in such a way that your privacy and security has to be work in tandem otherwise what is happening so if you see the moment uh, you are showing some sort of SSL decryption at a point. After that, the data is it, it's completely visible to the SOC analysts. They can look into, or even the IT analysts also. That is the biggest challenge in the implementation we have even? seen. So that's why the problem is that uh, when we are going to involve technology to create the privacy controls or framework, we have to understand that how the cybersecurity yeah, yeah. thing has to work, right? Otherwise. What is the challenge? The sec uh, by privacy, you are forced to not decrypt the data before reaching to the application. But uh, the security says the security controls, you have to look into the data on your SSL decryptor points. And they, after that, the data is visible. So who is th thinking for that? And how those controls are getting implemented? There is always that the, is the legal, ba legal basis legal of information. Basis. So yes. legal basis will always be the... Uh, the reason that will give you a license to use that data. If I have a legal basis to sort of decrypt it and read it, I can do that. So, so that lawful, concept, lawful yeah, processing yeah, of yeah, data. Yeah, lawful processing, legal basis. So, I think uh, you know, uh, uh, Vishwas, I would want to come to you. Uh, if very I may, if I may, just just add after to, my question. Okay. So, I think we've all spoken. There's a lot of work to be done. Technology controls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, awareness. I still feel this is also a very golden opportunity for organizations to turn their business processes also around. To say, do we really need this data and turn this into a business advantage by, you know, early adopters, etc. Cetera, et cetera. What are your views on that, given that you've seen so many geographies and you've seen privacy laws? Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, 
this law is going to help us, at least the IT industry a lot, because uh, right now, almost all the customers, apart from they signing the contract, they sign uh, that data pr uh, processing agreement, DPAs, they still have questions, even after signing DPA, that does your country has, uh, you know, safeguards for us? For example, if there is any kind of a breach or anything happens, are there laws in your country to safeguard us as a, uh, you know, external uh, uh, citizens of, of uh, I mean, we are not citizens of your country, but are there laws that will safeguard us, us. from? Because this is very important and these are very typical question and we have seen these are started coming up along with every RFP nowadays. That, because they are very concerned, even because the countries where the data is getting shared, those getting access, if they somehow fall into a trouble where, uh, you know, something has happened, whether they will get support from the local government or not. That is their worry. And now this, with the DPDP Act coming in, now we will have a better answer because earlier giving the answer, it was like indirect answer that yeah. we have this law, that law, but here there is a direct law for data protection itself, which actually is nothing but trying to cover almost all those data seven principles of data privacy and that is going to become, I mean, uh, give us that trust for all our customers. Uh, in fact, trust building is very important uh, over here. In fact, uh, uh, going forward, those companies who are going to implement this and uh, not only implement, but they're able to demonstrate this continuous effectiveness through, uh, you know, assurance by third party, I think they will have a age over those who are un unable to do that. And of course, as a result of that, there will be more business that will get attracted. Because, Superb. Yeah. So more business that will come. That yes, is the definitely. point we're trying to make. I think this is a golden opportunity yes. for us to pivot uh, the entire image of our country also, especially IT, ITS, pharma, a lot of sectors yes. saying we've got the best privacy, wo privacy laws in the world. Your data is safe with us. Come work with us as a country. Uh, Swapnil, so many people in the audience who want to start their journey, DPDPA, two bullet points on how should they start? Just two bullet points. So and, and then, Samrat, two bullet from, points from you. Yeah. So basically, likely, uh, we start the, the, from the opening only. First, you have to be uh, concerned about your data whenever you share it with anybody. And uh, uh, about the, if, if they, it's a response of individual responsible. And if there is any organization's data, so yes, technologically, you have to be uh, invest in your organizations. So it, it's my... Sure. Samrat. Yeah, I think uh, you, you should first start with your the, the, the data, data discovery and how the data is coming, right? You, you must understand from where it is coming and uh, where it goes in the system. Thank right? you. 30 seconds. All CIO CISOs in this room, can somebody stand up and say that I understand the entire length and breadth of data in my organization? Anybody? And that's the problem we are talking about. Sorry, right? And, and that's why I think technology involvement is a must exactly. because until and unless I don't know what's my perimeter, what's the data, how the data is coming in my organization, how the data is going out of my organization, what will I protect? Thank you. Uh, Vikas, sir, I'm giving you my job, 30 seconds, last closing comments. Sure. I think first is to understand the applicability because this DPDP covers every bit of not only the organization entities within the organization outside and all of that. So first is the applicability. The second is understanding what's my go role going to be with data fiduciary, data principal, the uh, controller, processor. There's so many entities and we have to understand that. Then we have to understand what is the mechanism to address the grievances. And finally, we have to see that the data erasure, as we all said, how long the retention can really happen. If there is no policy in place, we got to really create that. Superb. Sorry, sorry. Uh, one more, just want to highlight one more thing, which we faced. Okay, yeah, which we faced. Uh, so basically, yeah, as a AI and everybody is now, I think we're talking about the AI. So we just uh, faced the issue with the my uh, in North America, and it's due, due to deep fake. Okay, so this is also major issues, and we transfer the some of the dollar, not only uh, small big amount, but we just because of deep fake, he failed. He's my MD and. His WhatsApp number is different and he called my North American CFO and he transferred the money also. 
So this is also again uh, you have to be cautious about that. We we can do five hours of a panel only yeah, on deep fakes. Absolutely on deep fakes. Only Correct. on deep fakes. But one question. Uh, yesterday in a panel, somebody asked me, you know, saying I've been talking about deep fakes since 2018. I am like, you know, I understand when the first deep fake happened. When was the first deep fake? When was the first deep fake? The first deep fake goes back to Ramayan days. Yeah, that's what Ravan did. Ravan did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the first panel where I've gone to where everybody wants to speak. Give them a huge, huge round of applause. Thank you. Awesome. I think any number of hours spent on this really would be less to conclude. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's give the jury a huge round of applause. What a spectacular session it has been. So many takeaways to imbibe and to look forward to. Could we please have a group picture before you leave?